the uh, the greatest single problem we have today, I think, as a nation going forward, is the censorship of any individual uh, on social media who is not a conventional thinker, who is not committed to the establishment status quo, whether you are a, a conservative or a Republican or a libertarian or a Christian uh, or just a free thinker. Maybe you don't fit in any of those boxes, but you're just a free thinker. If you don't subscribe to what the people at Facebook and Twitter think is true, then you will be silenced. Those who think they're going to get away with this forever misunderstand the path of history. Uh, but in the short term, this is a, a real danger. People, regardless of their views, I don't care if you're a communist or a socialist or a progressive or a vegetarian or, or, or an extreme conservative or a libertarian, a Republican or a Democrat, you should be allowed to fully express yourself. Caveat emptor, let the consumer decide what he or she chooses to believe. People are smart. People are not stupid. People uh, can make their own decisions. People can decide for themselves. They don't need to be spoon fed by the corporate geeks at CNN who are not journalists. They're just propagandists and for the most part, low lives. Roger, that's actually one of the questions. So, so I pulled uh, some of my uh, viewers on uh, Reddit as well as on my Instagram to ask for questions for you. One of the questions we got asked about it was exactly that. What is the, with the censorship that's going on and with the fact that essentially, you know, there's sort of an oligopoly on social media that is somewhat aligned with each other, that is policing our ability to uh, have free speech. And in the modern time, free speech has to, to some degree, go through these media outlets. What is the long-term solution to this? So people have proposed the idea of nationalizing or, uh, or regulating some of these companies to ensure that free speech is available. What do you think is the way forward in the long term? Well, generally speaking, of course, I don't like government regulation of anything, uh, but there are times when there may be no other solution. The telephone company is a private company, but you don't have any right to deny anyone a telephone. That's regulation. Uh, these, these monolithic, uh, enormous social media companies are violating the antitrust laws uh, and, uh, and are operating in a mon monopolistic way. All one needs is an attorney general and a justice department with the commitment to the rule of law to act against them and force them to either act in a way which opens the doors to everyone or shut them down. A platoon of federal marshals could go into Facebook and shut them down. All it takes is will. We are a nation of laws. The laws are more important than the whims of Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, if this doesn't happen, then citizens, if the government will not serve the citizens, then the citizens will ultimately serve themselves. That, that's mob rule. That's not what we want. But people have tasted freedom. Once they've tasted freedom of expression, it cannot be taken away from them. They will not let the toothpaste be pushed back in the tube. It'll never work. So uh, look, I'm one who fears, fears that a violent revolution is headed uh, this way, that both sides are deeply committed uh, to, their, to their beliefs, uh, that we are, what we see happening in our streets today is not some indigenous uh, protest uh, against the policies of government or the events of the day. This is a willful, well-planned, well-orchestrated, extremely well-financed socialist revolution. That's what we see. It has nothing to do with George Floyd. It has nothing to do with what George Washington stood for or may or may not have done. That's not the reason why we are pulling down his statues. But those who think that the country is about to march off into a thousand years of darkness misunderstand the fact that the, the American Revolution was pulled off by 3% of the people. The rest of the people said, well, do we really want to mess with King George? I mean, maybe we should just accept these ridiculous taxes and 
let him run our lives from the other side of the globe. But 3% of the people, men and women of, of real true belief in freedom, they were prepared not to accept that future. And they changed the face of the world. So I don't expect every uh, citizen to, uh, to march to the ramparts and prepare to do battle for the concept of constitutional liberty and freedom, but we don't need every citizen. We need that same 3%, and I'm convinced that they exist. That's actually one of the biggest questions, the most frequently asked questions, which is people wanted to know, do you think there's a potential for a hot Cold War in the future of the U.S., and are we in it? Cold, uh, sorry, a hot civil war, and are we in a cold civil war at the moment? Uh, it's not really cold anymore. I, th yeah, I think we, we we are in a cold civil war, which is getting warmer by the day. Uh, the the those who believe in our current system uh, have shown enormous restraint. In some cases, restraint that I only pray that I could have shown in similar circumstances. But when a United States senator from Kentucky cannot walk the streets in the capital of the United States for fear of being attacked by a violent mob, those who have concealed carry weapon permits uh, need to, to be prepared to defend themselves. I do not advocate uh, you know, a first strike against anybody. I don't advocate a violent assault against anybody. But at the same time, Nobody should be roughed up, beaten, threatened, have their life threatened uh, by thugs uh, if there are others who are prepared to stand up and protect them. That's why I think Kyle Rittenhouse uh, is a symbol, and I think he's a hero. Uh, and if there is a judicial system that thinks they're going to, uh, to destroy him, well, I think they better think twice.